talk about uh, the 2016 ERP market landscape. Uh, James Mallory with uh, E2B Technologies. And we're going to get started here. Uh, just a disclaimer real quick. We do represent um, several ERP products, uh, namely Sage 100, Sage X3, and Epicor ERP. Um, my goal for this presentation is to try to be as unbiased as possible. Um, although we do have a lot of experience with these particular ERP products, I can tell you who we run into, who we compete against time and time again. That's the insight I'm going to provide to you. Um, there's a lot of things. I've been in this market for close to 20 years, um, so I've got a lot of experience, and I'm going to try to give a lot of that to you because we know at the end of the day um, there's a lot of options on the market. The products we represent may or may not be a fit for you. Certainly, we hope that you evaluate them. Um, but if they're not, we want you to pick the right product because uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be best for you. It's going to be best for us. So I think we're back to where uh, we lost the phones here. Um, back in 1997, there was a group of ERP vendors uh, affectionately known as the JBOPs. It was JD Edwards, Bond, Oracle, PeopleSoft, and SAP. At that point, those vendors represented about 59% of all of the ERP market share. That was according to uh, AMR research. Now what happened between 97 and 2004 is that a lot of those companies were acquired. So I believe the order it went was, um, let's see here, SAP still on their own. Uh, Bond was acquired by uh, Invensys and now today resides with Infor. Uh, you have uh, Oracle, which acquired PeopleSoft, which had merged or acquired JD Edwards. Um, so really, the JBOPs kind of went away. Um, in, in 2004, this gentleman, Bruce Richardson at AMR, said that now, again, 2004, the new big players were the SOMs, okay? And that was SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, and Sage. And... What's kind of astute here and a little bit different was the fact that in 2004, those vendors, those four vendors, accounted for about 72% of the entire ERP market. The more significant part is that both Microsoft and Sage had to focus more in the mid-market, not in the Tier 1 space. But that was 12 years ago. So a lot has happened since then. Um, you know, SAP and Oracle, they're still dominating that Tier 1 space. Sage and Microsoft are still very, very relevant in that SMB kind of mid-market segment. But Bruce um, didn't really cover Intuit. Intuit has dominated the entry-level market for years, you know, basic entry-level accounting. Now, what's happened since 2004 is there's some other players out there that have really gained some traction. You've got NetSuite out there. One of the fastest growing ERP systems on the planet, uh, grew up in the cloud, is completely hosted, uh, great product. You have Epicor. Epicor um, has come out of multiple acquisitions, like a lot of the players in the market, um, and I think they are truly one of the leaders in the SME segment. I've seen a lot of software out there. You have Zero with an X. Um, they've started to emerge in the entry-level space, um, especially in global markets. They're based out of New Zealand. And then you've got Infor, and Infor, Infor initially came out of nowhere. They acquired uh, Mapix, they acquired uh, all the legacy ERP applications out there from uh, Computer Associates, and they've made you know, dozens of acquisitions since then. Now, initially, Infor was kind of viewed as a consolidator, right? They weren't going to really do much in the market. They were buying customer base, and that was going to be it. Truth be told, Infor has made some pretty significant investments in their product lines, and as we'll see here in a little bit, they are a vendor that I would suggest that um, anyone looking at ERP would look at, uh, depending on their vertical industry needs and the level of complexity within their business. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. So the big question is, we went from JBOPs to SOMs, what's the new acronym? We've got Intuit, Zero, Sage, Microsoft, NetSuite, Epicor, N4, SAP, Oracle. You know, somebody's got to come up with it. There's the letters for you. So I took a little stab at it, and I've got 06 Mines. Eh, not really catchy. X Mission, easy to remember. That's not too bad. Miso Nexus, 
kind of makes me hungry a little bit for some reason. But my favorite, because I played around with this for a while, folks, so mini sex. I say winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, you know, somebody had to come up with this. I'm having a little fun with it. You know, you know our industry and ERP, we've got a lot of acronyms out there. So maybe this one will stick and they'll give me credit for it. And again, maybe not. Uh, but let's move on here a little bit. Um, what I've done here is I've kind of painted a picture for you of the major players as I see them. Okay, now you ask the vendors, they're going to put themselves into different quadrants. Gardner has their own way of viewing things. But this is what I see in reality. You've got the small players. You've got entry-level accounting, maybe pseudo ERP players. QuickBooks in the U.S. North American market is still the dominant player. As I mentioned earlier, you have zero that has kind of come out of nowhere in the past couple of years, and they're viable. You've got Sage 50, which is the old Peachtree product here in the States. You've got a Sage 50 in Canada, which is uh, the old Simply Accounting product. And you have Sage 50 in the UK, which is a completely different product line. From Sage, you also have Sage 1, which is over 100,000 users, uh, another viable option for you. And then you've got kind of this other group of up-and-comers. You've got FreshBooks, you've got Cashew, Harvest, Wave, and Zoho Books. And there are many, many others out there. But these are kind of what I view as the people that are making a lot of noise, um, gaining some traction in that entry-level space. In that space, what you're looking at is typically companies are going to have between 1 and 10 users. This isn't 1 in 10 employees. This is 1 in 10 concurrent users in a business system. Typically in this segment, you're going to have about 3 to 5 users, I would, I would expect. Uh, you start to get to the higher end of that, and you're going to be pushing the limits of those systems. So the very cheap, um, as you can see there in the bottom of the curve, um, you're probably looking at an investment under $10,000, sometimes significantly less than that, $1,000 or less. You can buy QuickBooks you know, for $30 a month, I think. Um, and the implementation is, is relatively insignificant because it's kind of a canned accounting application. But once you graduate from entry-level accounting, where do you go? You go to what I call the SMB, the, the small and mid-sized business. These are going to be companies with somewhere between 50, I'm sorry, 5 and 50 users, uh, 50 kind of on the higher end there. And we've got some of our traditional players here. We've got Sage 100, you know, the old Mass 90, 200 product, Sage 300 being the old ACPAC product. You have two solutions here from Microsoft. You have uh, Dynamics GP, which is Great Plains, Dynamics Nav, which is Navision. Under that, you have Intact, uh, newer cloud player. Obviously, NetSuite kind of falls into this category. We have SAP Business One, which is a completely different product than uh, the big SAP. You have Acumatica, another cloud player. You've got CISPRO, um, kind of a long-standing stalwart, um, specifically in the manufacturing segment. Dell Tech, a uh, big, strong player here in professional services. Uh, and you also have Apple Corps, kind of in this space, coming down market with a cloud offering. Now, there are literally hundreds of products in this SMB space. But if you look at customer base, these are the leaders. You outgrow SMB, where are you going to go? You're going to get into SME, small and mid-sized enterprise. These are companies that are going to need somewhere between 20 and 1,000 users. You'll see that I have put you know, some overlap here on purpose, and that's because every business, their needs, their complexity, their budgets change. Um, at different times. In that SME segment, you're looking at Epicor uh, with Epicor ERP. Um, Infor has a slew of products that fit into the segment. You've got Sage X3. Um, Microsoft has Dynamics AX, the Xapta product. You have IFS out of Sweden. You've got QAD, um, one of those companies and products that a lot of people forget about, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for them. Fantastic uh, ERP product. If you're in this space, you're a manufacturer, distributor, um, you know, it's worth a look. You've got Plex, which kind of is a hybrid here. It could maybe slide down a little bit in that SM, MSMB space, um, but it can also slide up into this SME segment. And that's, again, another uh, pure play cloud application. Didn't mention in the SMB space your investment. You're looking at about $10,000 to about $100,000 in software 
um, as well as consulting services. Get in that SME segment, you're looking at probably 100000 to a million for your investment in your ERP. Kind of scary, but um, reality is reality. That's what you're looking to put in. And then from there, you get in that Tier 1 segment. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to say, you know, IFS, Epicor, Infor, Sage, Microsoft, they all think they're in that Tier 1 space. But if you're a global 500 company, 99% of them are using SAP and Oracle. Yeah, those are the, the two big dogs there. And when you get into that level, you know, you're looking at a pretty significant investment, you know, a million plus. So let's take a, a real quick overview of each of these major players. You got QuickBooks and uh, Sage 50, the two stalwarts kind of here in North America. Uh, QuickBooks, you know, six million customers, a million of them roughly on uh, the QuickBooks online application, about 60,000 that are on the QuickBooks enterprise application. So uh, very significant customer base there. Uh, huge CPA referral community, 130,000 CPAs, 60,000 QuickBook Pro Advisors out there working with the QuickBooks product. Their big focus is on cloud. Um, they acquired a product called Lettuce uh, a couple years ago. They've been supposedly working on integrating and building manufacturing capabilities into the QBO platform. Uh, if you go out to their marketplace, it's apps.com. They've got 310 independent uh, software vendor solutions or apps that plug into their product. The only knock on them is the, the CPA community doesn't like some of the ways they handle the accounting. It's um, maybe pushing the limits of uh, generally accepted accounting principles. And there are some database concerns, especially in larger user counts. Sage 50, uh, formerly Peachtree, they got over 5,000 customers, you know, roughly somewhere around in there. They don't really release those numbers. Um, based on my experience, they're probably in there. Still a major player. Um, they work with about 26,000 uh, accountants in their Sage Accountant Network. The product overview, there's really no formal uh, plans for the cloud, partly because uh, Sage does have the Sage One platform. Um, their current offering is very strong, uh, very comparable to QuickBooks. Um, but it does have some limited manufacturing capabilities in there as well. They've got uh, Sage PSS, which is their apps marketplace. There's about 80 ISV applications out there to extend Sage 50. Um, big thing with uh, Sage 50 is it's, it's very strong in, uh, in GAP. Um, and they recently, say the past couple years, updated the database to uh, Pervasive, which is a, a really solid and stable uh, database platform. Uh, this is kind of an overview of the two leaders there. Uh, Zero, uh, founded in 2006, so really not that old, about 600,000 customers. Uh, probably the fastest growing company in the century level space. Uh, and they claimed to have about 16,000 global partners. Again, a lot of those uh, being CPAs. Uh, exclusively cloud, uh, there really probably isn't much there for manufacturers. Uh, but they do have a fairly significant um, ISV uh, community with about 400 apps out there. The others out here, uh, real quick summary, you got Harvest, Wave, Sage One, and FreshBooks. Uh, you know, all of these are viable. If you're in the century level space, take a look at them all. You can get trials for most of them and find out, you know, which ones are going to work best for you. And none of them are going to break the bank. Um, sometimes it's going to be personal preference. All right. I don't have a whole lot of analysis here. And this is where we have the most experience. And I'm going to tell you why. Sage 100, Sage 300. Dynamics GP, Dynamics Nav, you know, pick one. They're all very, very similar. Each one has some strengths. Each one has its weaknesses. But if you were to look at them across the board, they all have pretty good underlying technology. They all have a cloud strategy. Uh, they all have very active uh, communities of ISVs, developers, and strong partner networks. You know, if I'm in this space, I'm looking for a good solid step up from one of those entry level products. I'm going to look at all of these at a very high level, maybe pick my one or two favorites to look at, you know, a little bit further in depth. Um, there's a couple others in this space that um, I'm going to take a look at. Um, Cispro, especially if I'm a manufacturer, maybe hybrid manufacturer, mix of process discrete, they're, they'd be definitely one on my short list. Uh, SAP Business One would, would certainly be another product to consider. Then in the SMB space, we have the exclusively cloud players. 
right? So the ones we've looked at previously, they're available premise or available cloud. These are products that have been born in the cloud. Uh, you got NetSuite. They are the largest SaaS uh, SMB ERP product on the planet. Hosted subscription only. You can buy it direct. You can buy it through a partner. Uh, they're gaining quite a bit of traction in the ISV or independent software vendor community. So there's a lot of apps available out there for it. Um, real strong embedded CRM and e-commerce. Uh, pretty strong distribution capabilities, inventory, sales order, purchasing. Um, really strong for professional service automation, project accounting. Uh, if you're in a, a service business, it'd definitely be a product you want to take a look at. I say limited manufacturing. You know, it's not too bad, um, but if you've got some fairly complex manufacturing requirements, NetSuite's probably not the product for you. Intact, exclusively SaaS, SMB, hosted subscription, you buy it through partner, fairly limited on the ISV community. There's not a lot of third-party development out going on out there for Intact. The accounting's pretty strong, folks, um, especially if you're in the not-for-profit or professional service uh, industry. Uh, I would certainly take a look at Intact as, as an option. Distribution is there, uh, inventory, sales order, uh, purchase order. Uh, we actually did uh, try to resell the product for a while. Our heritage being in the supply chain, it just wasn't there at that point in time for us. Um, so it might be an option for you to consider in distribution manufacturing, but you're going to run into some limitations there. Uh, Acumatica, uh, very similar to the other two here, hosted subscription, available through VARS. Fairly limited ISV community, but they're very dedicated. Um, their distribution's pretty good. If you're a distributor, um, definitely take a look at Acumatica. They do have a third-party manufacturing solution that's pretty strong. Uh, and the, the real benefit to Acumatica is they don't charge by user. It's unlimited users. You buy access to the software. And then down here at the bottom, I've got one more here to consider, and that's Financial Force. Um, cloud-based accounting. It's on the force.com platform. Uh, pretty strong, again, your, your core financials. Uh, pretty strong for professional service automation. Outside of that, I don't know if I'd really consider them. You know, their big benefit is going to be integration with uh, Salesforce uh, CRM. Uh, so another option there to consider. All right, SME space. I put these two on the slide on purpose because we represent both products. We know them pretty well. We know how to position them pretty well. Uh, Epicor ERP. Uh, Epicor themselves is a vendor. They have a lot of different products available. Uh, the Epicor ERP product is, is really their flagship ERP product. Uh, they have some other point solutions available for distribution and some other different industries. Significant and modernized platform. Uh, their technology platform is absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's deep functionality throughout the application. They're limited on ISVs. They don't have an open market when it comes to development. Uh, they tend instead to work exclusively with a handful of vendors. So if you need EDI, there's one vendor. If you need credit collections, there's one vendor. Benefits, there's pros and cons to that strategy. Um, they have a, a very new focus on cloud. They've been doing cloud for quite some time, but um, going forward, you know, their focus is on cloud. It's cloud first, premises and option. Uh, extensive manufacturing capabilities, especially in discrete. Uh, companies that are making hard goods, assembly, metal fabrication, that kind of stuff. Completely, totally global solution. They're multi-everything, multi-company, multi-entity, multi-currency. Um, it's, it's a big product. Then you got Sage. So Sage originally came from Adonix, um, which was a French-based uh, ERP provider. They had a relatively narrow focus on uh, wholesale distribution and manufacturing, um, as well as services. In the manufacturing space, what differentiates Sage X3 from Epicor uh, really is the fact that they do process and discrete. Epicor is almost exclusively discrete, does have some installs in the process world, but you know, you're, when you get into formulation, recipes, batch yield, things like that, you're talking X3 all the way. Very strong accounting. In fact, uh, they've recently done some uh, pretty significant enhancements around accounting. The distribution functionality is, is really, really strong as well. Um, they do have a proprietary platform, development platform, kind of similar to Epicor with the ICE platform. Uh, the SAFE platform is, is solid. Uh, it's based on you know, many years of experience uh, developing a platform and ERP applications. Very scalable, 
a very robust. Um, kind of their big claim to fame is the embedded workflow. They have a great workflow engine to kind of automate uh, different things that are going to happen within your business. Uh, just like Epicor, it's a global solution and they are multi-everything. So if you're discrete, I'd look at both of them. If you're process, you know, probably look more at the X3 side. Wholesale distribution, you might want to take a look at both. Uh, services, you can look at both. A couple more out here, uh, my, my Microsoft Dynamics AX. This is Microsoft strategic product in the SME space. Uh, originally was uh, DomGuard Exopta. Um, extensive, top-down functionality, focus on distribution, discrete manufacturing services, really strong financials, uh, deployed premise or hosted on Microsoft's Azure cloud. So it's not true cloud, but you can get it in a hosted model. Uh, pretty strong uh, and growing ISV community, um, including some verticals out there for process, uh, rental, and a couple others. Uh, sold through uh, regionalized VARs or value-added resellers. You know, you're in this space, um, you know, it's a good product to check out, uh, very scalable. Uh, Infor, uh, I use the Cloud Suite logo here, but really there's a, a number of different products in their portfolio you might want to consider. The one that we run into the most, office, most often in this space is the Sightline product. Uh, it used to be owned by uh, Symix uh, here in Ohio, and then was acquired by Mapix, which then, of course, was acquired by uh, Infor. Um, you know, all these, these products, folks, are viable contenders. You're going to want to take a look at them. Infor's got a, a fantastic product. We've won deals against uh, Sightline. We've lost deals against Sightline. A lot of times it really depends on personal preference. A couple others out here. Um, these are what I call maybe the forgottens, uh, the products that people maybe aren't considering as much that maybe they should. Um, you got IFS, um, headquartered in Sweden, Global Solution. You know, predominantly a premise-based solution, discrete manufacturing focus. A you know, pretty good product from what I've heard. Again, QAD, um, progress-based solution, unless, they, unless they've made changes since I uh, last looked them up. Uh, pretty strong and discrete in process, automotive, med device, um, pretty strong verticals. Uh, headquartered in California. And then you got Plex, uh, Plex being uh, formerly Plexus and Plex Online, Cloud Blitz cloud-based SaaS application, headquarters in Michigan. Uh, God help them, I'm from Ohio, O-H-I-O. Um, but, you know, another viable option out there for you to consider. Um, their real focus is on automotive and uh, industrial. Uh, probably not a solution I'd recommend for process. Uh, but anything in the discrete side, you might want to take a look at them. Tier 1 space, apples, oranges, uh, you say tomato, I say tomato, you got SAP Oracle, SAP is the big dog, uh, my SAP all in one, um, they have the, uh, the Business One product which was acquired by Top Manage, that's the SMB product they sell, used to have the By Design product which was uh, completely cloud based, they've since uh, discontinued that application. Oracle, um, second largest ERP vendor on the planet. Um, and the number one database vendor on the planet. So you can't really go wrong there. If uh, you're looking to spend a lot of money, uh, you have a complex business process, you know, you're over 100 users, these are two products you might want to take a look at. Now the other recommendation I always make is take a look at the verticals, right? So there's industry products out there that are designed for one particular industry. These are some of them out here. These are certainly nowhere near all of them. But just give you some examples, you get into metal fabrication, uh, E2 shop systems, good product, uh, exact job boss, been around for a long time, global shop, uh, chemicals and paints, you get a bunch of products from Aptian with uh, Ross ERP, uh, Data Core, more of a chemical distribution type product, Batchmaster, Process Pro, uh, nonprofit, you got a lot of options there, Blackbot, Abila, which was the old Sage uh, MIP product. You can see here, you know, go to Google, Type in your industry, food and beverage, ERP, you're going to come up with these and a lot more. Type in uh, ERP for IT consulting, ERP for banking and finance. You're going to find these products, you're going to find a lot more. Um, another good site for you to go to to, to get a little research is uh, Capterra, uh, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. -R -R uh, you start doing these searches, you'll see Capterra pop up. It's probably one of the most extensive uh, directories of ERP products out there. They have them. Uh, pretty well organized by vertical. Uh, another one, a little outdated information, but still pretty comprehensive, is called Soft Scout. Uh, be another good site for you to go to and 
take a look at what's out there on the market. A couple more uh, industry verticals here, uh, apparel textile, lumber and wood, printing and publishing, electronics, uh, paper products, hospitality, transportation, retail. Um, folks, it don't matter what industry you're in, uh, there are ERP applications designed specifically for you. Um, one of the things I do want to mention here before we get into to this slide is, you know, if I'm looking at ERP and I want to know, you know, what's available in the market, how, you know, what should I maybe consider, I'm going to pick a couple of the, the industry leaders that are maybe appropriately sized to my business, and then I'm going to look at a couple of the vendors in my particular vertical. Um, we'll talk in our next webinar, uh, ERP evaluation considerations about some of the differences between a vertical industry-specific ERP application and the more general um, ERP products that we covered today. Uh, so if you haven't signed up yet, um, go to uh, e2benterprise.com, click the news page, you'll see our webinars, you can register there. And tomorrow we will be talking more about considerations on what should you pick. Um, then on Friday, we're going to come back here this week and we're going to talk uh, more about a comparison of some of the, uh, the major products on the market, get down a little feature function, uh, industry specific, again, keeping it at a high level. If you are in the market or think you may be in the market to switch ERPs here in the uh, next six months, year, maybe two years, uh, we do have some live demonstrations of some of these products uh, that we're going to be doing next week. Uh, starting with Sage X3 on 1214, that's a two-hour live demonstration. Uh, then on 1215, uh, we're going to be doing a live demonstration of Epicor ERP. And then on 1218, we're going to wrap it up with uh, Sage 100 with Job Ops, which is just a phenomenal uh, kind of job shop, make to order, uh, install, repair type solution that is um, sitting on top of the Sage 100 platform. Uh, but we're open to questions now. If you want to enter questions in the Q&A panel, we'll go ahead and answer those. And uh, while we wait for those questions to come through, just want to mention I do have my contact information here up on the screen. Feel free if you have any questions whatsoever, shoot them over to me. I'll try to answer them or get them to the right people. Um, tons of information on our website at edbenterprise.com. Yeah, we're not pushy folks. Uh, download something. We may give you a call. We may not if you're not interested at this time. We'll leave you alone, uh, but we have a lot of comparison guides, a lot of videos, a lot of white papers, um, ERP uh, requests for proposal templates, just a, a ton of resources out there that, to help you make a better decision uh, when it comes to your ERP applications. So let's pop over here and see if we have any questions. And I'm not seeing any questions, so we're going to wrap up here. Um, you got my contact information. I'd like to thank you all for taking time out today. I realize you're very busy. Um, hopefully you got a little bit out of this, and hopefully we'll see you here on the webinar again tomorrow. Uh, if not, we did record these. We will be posting these up to our YouTube channel and uh, sending you a link so you can watch them again. Share them with a family and friend. Uh, nothing says I love you like a webinar on ERP software. So with that, we're going to let you have the rest of your day back, and uh, hopefully we'll see you here soon. Take care. Bye-bye.